We've become so reliant on the supply chain and the just-in-time delivery system that if it were to stop for just 24 hours, the results would be catastrophic. Hey everybody, it's Magic Prepper and today we're talking about what happens if the supply chain stops for 24 hours or more. It gets very hectic very quickly. And it's something we need to discuss because the supply chain is constantly showing its weaknesses. There's been lots of examples of its vulnerabilities being put on display right now. With the floods in British Columbia cutting off the port of Vancouver, over $350 million worth of goods per day are affected by the supply chain not being able to operate. And this could happen anywhere at any time. And it's very important that we prepare accordingly based on the fact that the supply chain is extremely fragile. And if you're worried about the supply chain eventually breaking down, then hit the subscribe button below because hopefully these conversations will make us more prepared for that eventuality. Now, it's such an issue that even the White House has made a special task force known as the Supply Chain Disruptions Task Force because they know how dire things will get if the supply chain actually falls apart. Now, here are some examples as to what will happen if the supply chain stops for just 24 hours. And I'm talking about one single day. So this is something you should definitely be considering because generally 24 hours in our daily lives is very fast and very short lived. However, when it comes to the supply chain, it could be the nail in the coffin. Trucks in this country, the United States of America, move over 70% of all goods. And so we're talking about the supply chain involving cargo ships and railways and eventually trucks, which is generally what gets everything to its final destination. Now, 70% of everything's moved by trucks. If the trucks suddenly stop, what happens, okay? Well, first and foremost, in the first 24 hours, no delivery of medical supplies occurs. So hospitals begin to run out of basic supplies. And this is just the first 24 hours. Keep this in mind, okay? Gas stations begin to run out of fuel. Manufacturer components begin to show shortages. And you have to keep that in mind that with factories and manufacturers around the world, they rely on the supply chain to bring them the components in order to create the products that they create. So suddenly those components stop showing up. Okay? There'll be no US mail or package delivery in just 24 hours. Okay? The tr trucks stop moving, the mail stops as well. Food shortages begin to develop as well, okay? Because People start buying and nothing's coming in. And we all know the general grocery store only has three days worth of food inside of it, okay? Gas prices will skyrocket and there will start to be lines at the pump because people will catch wind as to what's happening and everybody will have the same idea about filling up their tank. So that's another thing that's happening day one. We're talking the first day still. Just keep up with me here, okay? Great. And we know that in the first 24 hours, the full panic hasn't quite set in yet. And that's why the first 24 hours is such a big deal. Because that one day can never be reciprocated. We'll never catch up to that singular day once again. And for the rest of our lives, we'll be behind a full 24 hours when it comes to our modern day supply chain operating system. And now you can assume that things will get very dire from there, which they will. So in the first two to three days, what's happening? Because we know the first 24 hours is rough, but what comes next? Well, food shortages escalate and panic buying ensues. Everybody's on board now. Food's not coming back in the grocery store. Shelves are getting very empty. Buy, buy, buy. Get all the food because it's not going to be there much longer. The panic buying starts and everything starts to be emptied out immediately, okay? Essential supplies like bottled water and canned meats, for example, will all disappear. So that's what's going to go first. Yeah, people might not be taking the ingredients they need to be able to make some kind of creme brulee, but they're going to definitely take all the spam, all the tuna, and they're going to definitely take all the bottled water. So those are things you should definitely have in mind with what will go first during this panic buying in the first two or three days, okay? Not two or three weeks, two or three days, okay? Then, ATMs are gonna run out of cash. And that's crazy because once the cash doesn't come out, it's gonna cause more panic. So you can assume bank runs begin and people start pulling cash out and 
we all know where that goes from there, okay? And I'm gonna actually show a graphic over here on this side of the screen so you guys can see that this was actually information that was put out for us all to have and digest based on what would happen if the trucker stopped driving. And this is data that was put together for everybody to be able to see. And it's unfortunate that this is how fragile the system really is and that this information is very public and yet many people aren't aware of it. So I felt like it was important to make you very aware. Now, gas stations will be out of fuel after two or three days. Okay, two, three, gone. That's it. You can imagine what kind of panic comes afterward because the gas stations are now empty and people are still needing more gas. Trust me on that one, okay? The garbage also starts to pile up because trucks aren't moving. Garbage has nowhere to go. They're not gonna just start picking it up when they have nowhere to take it. Next thing you know, garbage is just piling up in the street. People don't know where to take their garbage. People are starting to put garbage in weird places. This is a good sign of SHTF now, isn't it, okay? So, container ships are also permanently idled. Two or three days. 24 hours breaks the whole thing. Two or three days makes it never come back the same way again, okay? Container ships are permanently idle. They don't know when they're gonna unload. They don't know when they're gonna dock. They don't know. And it is strange when you actually apply this to today's standards and see all of these idled cargo ships out in the ocean and you have to wonder, are we already on day two or three? Something to really consider, okay? And now let's go past that just a little bit, right? One week. One week of no trucks moving. Cars stop driving because no one's got gas. So the freeways will look like something out of The Walking Dead because who's got gas? Nobody. So no one's driving. And if you are driving, man, people are looking at you because uh, you're the only one with gas apparently. And the hospitals start to run out of their oxygen supply, which is a really big deal. So hospitals have suddenly been decimated now by week one. They lost all their supplies. They aren't getting any more. They can't even have oxygen now for the patients that need it. Only takes seven days. And in two weeks, because we gotta go a little bit further, clean water's out, right? Clean water begins to run out because, um, well, you know, things just aren't being delivered where they need to go. And it takes a lot of different components to make sure that everyone has clean water. When I talk about that, what I mean is like maintenance and chemicals and everything else related to treating water. So the clean water, it's gone, okay? Oh wait, that's only two, yeah, two weeks. Four weeks, okay? After four weeks of no trucks moving, we're actually out of water. Now you'd be surprised how important trucks are when it comes to making sure there's enough water to distribute around the general population. And eh, four weeks in and suddenly no one has any water, can you imagine what that actually looks like? So, I wanted to have this conversation with you because we have to be very vigilant during these times when the supply chain is so broken already. And we have to understand that one day without trucks moving which basically is one day of broken supply chain, is kind of the end of it in many ways. It's hard to come back from it, and in fact, day two or three makes things a lot worse. We have to watch out. Be prepared ahead of time. Don't wait until the supply chain is already broken. Don't wait until day two or three to be out there panic buying with everyone else. And definitely don't wait until week four when there is no clean water any longer. These are things that we prepare for and these are the reasons why. The system's so fragile that all it takes is one day for everything to come crashing down. And what we've seen recently with the supply chain, with what's happening in the ports, what's happening in places like British Columbia where natural disasters can actually break the supply chain and man-made disasters like in the Suez Canal can also happen which can break the supply chain. If anything finally comes together and culminates into one large disaster scenario and that supply chain actually shuts down for a full 24 hours, I'd have to say things are gonna be pretty rough from there on after. So, I wanted to bring this to your attention. Hopefully this information was helpful for you and gave you a little bit more motivation to prepare because now you know how easily this can all just go away. And without anything else to say about it, that's gonna be it for Magic Breath.